It's Christmas time, and that's Christmas with a K. An entirely new, non-denominational holiday for us to celebrate together. Get in the Christmas with a K spirit by heading over to curtisconnor.com to grab the new merch. We got a long sleeve, a Christmas sweater, and a new Christmas beanie. And a bunch of other items are restocked as well. Check it out. Hey there, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, what's up? How's it going? And if you're coming back, what's up? How's it going? It's really good to see you again. I hope you're doing well. You see what happens when you subscribe to my channel? You get an extra greeting at the beginning of every single one of my videos except for that one time. So press that subscribe button for an extra greeting. I know I said last video that I put my plaques on the wall, but sorry. All right, folks. I'll admit it, okay? I'm a 90s baby. Wah, wah, change my 90s diaper. I'm a 90s baby. I grew up in the golden age of fashion, technology, and entertainment. You kids don't know. <laughs> you, you kids don't know nothing. Well, I was born in 94, so I don't really remember too much of the 90s, but the early 2000s were the best. I'd come home from school, I'd have some Dunkaroos. I'd, I'd nudge my crush on MSN. I'd draw one of those S's. I'd listen to Simple Plan on my Walkman, and I'd watch television. Television. Just so much television. I'd watch a huge TV. TVs were so big. And not that way, like that way. I don't mean to body shame old TVs, but they were double cheeked up for no reason. Double cheeked up! And if you've been subscribed to me for a while, you're aware of my obsession with early 2000s television. I made several videos about shows that were produced at that time, like Keys to the VIP, Mansers, Man Tracker, Prank Patrol. There's a bunch, but there's something about them that's just so fascinating to me. I don't know why. Maybe it's nostalgia. Maybe it's just because they're all just so goddamn insane. Which brings us to the topic of today's video. Dating shows. They were absolutely huge in the early 2000s. They were bigger than the backs of TVs. Double cheaper. You had shows like Blind Date, Next, A Shot at Love with Teal Tequila, Parental Control, Room Raiders, and many more. And Mandy Moore. And they were all sort of these weird like competition slash game slash dating shows. And they all had some sort of weird gimmick that went along with it. But at the end of the day, the shows were just about two people falling in love with each other. Even though I don't think any long-term relationship was ever formed on Next, you know? Wow, your husband is great. How did you know he was the one? You know, it's funny you asked me that. We were on the set of Next and I heard him say, Kirby, Kirby girls, girls make, make my junk twitch. And I just had to have him. That's beautiful. But when I mentioned those shows, those are like the heavy hitters, you know? Those are the big popular ones. But of course there were other shows that were trying to be as popular as that one, right? For example, there was one show that aired for six episodes in 2001. And I only found out about the show recently. It wasn't very popular uh, when I was younger. And that's the show we're going to be looking at today. And this show was called Chains of Love. I wanted to make a video about this show because the premise is just fucking bonkers and misery loves company. So I'm bringing you along. So let's see how this show works. The new series Chains of Love shatters that calm as one gutsy woman or man is chained to four members of the opposite sex. Like Witness the anger. Well, get off the damn thing. The honesty. <gasps> is sex your main interest in me? No. Oh. The competition and the connections. Yeah. If you didn't catch that, here's how it works. So there's the main person, they're known as the picker, okay? And their arms and legs are chained to four people of the opposite sex, and they're known as the players. They spend four days chained together. The picker sends home one person every day until they're left with one person. This is like if Jigsaw was hired to write a dating show. Do you want to date a girl? And oh yeah, the <laughs> the picker also just has $10,000 to, to give to the guys when they send them away as like a parting gift, I guess. And at the end of the show, they can either take all the money and just leave the last person or split the money with the last person and continue to date them. So realistically, you could just bite the bullet, go through this thing for four days, and then you make $10,000. That's $2,500 a day. And you just have to be chained to four dudes from 2001. That's easy money. I do that for free. But whatever, now we know how the game works. Let's meet the picker. This week, Stephanie, a beautiful writer and model, will be moving into this glamorous house. I am also designing. I just have this like innate um, ability to design clothes. Bruh. Meh. Come on. I used to get those shirts at like theme parks, like the little booth where they airbrush shirts. You know what I'm talking about? You go up to the guy and he's like, what do you want the shirt to say? And then you go, Beyblade. And then he goes, I hate my life. Maybe that's what she means. Since she's the one telling the airbrush guy at the theme park what she wants the shirt to say, then she's the one designing it, even though he's doing all the work. I ordered a delicious steak at Applebee's last night. I guess you could say I have an innate ability to cook delicious steak. All right, now we know what Steph is all about. She's 
a model. She's, you know, she's adventurous. She's fun. She's super good at designing clothes. Innate ability to design clothes. So now it's time we meet the fellas. All right, we got Jason, the strong silent type. He's smart, handsome, and charming. And then we got Alan, the nice guy. I'm not gonna treat you like a princess if you're being a bitch. Oh, did I say nice guy? Fuck, I meant total asshole. Damn it, sorry. Cause wow, dude, what a crazy thing to not only say, but lead with. Holy shit, man. You think the director was just like, Alan, what do you, say one cool thing about yourself. I'm not gonna treat someone like a princess if they're being a bitch. Okay, most people say they like going to the beach or something. No, I said bitch, not beach. No, I know, Alan, you're a bitch. And you're a bitch. Mean. And I'm a bitch. All right, next fella, we got Pete. He's athletic, fun, <laughs> and kind of a goofball. And when I say kind of a goofball, I mean borderline functioning alcoholic. He drinks so much, he's on the piss as soon as he gets to the house. Why would I give her the six pack? And last but not least, we got Jack. Okay, and he's advertised as the passionate guy, but let's watch this clip. I love passionate men. Passions? Oh, God. I'm the guy that you want to see. Spoken like a guy with no passion. Oh, passion? Yeah, I'm the guy you want to see. So, yeah, next question. <laughs> I'm the guy that you want to see. You didn't answer jack shit. Jack. Okay, so now that we've met all the boys, now it's time for Steph to meet the boys. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hello, oh, oh. Pete. Nice to meet you. Hi. Woo, Pete. All right, going in for the hug right off the bat. I, I like the confidence. Probably because he's blackout drunk. <laughs> but hey, whatever works, right? So now that they've all met, now it's time for them to go into this place called the Ritual Room for them to be chained up for four days. Sorry if anybody just walked by you while you watched that part of the video, because that with no context, Whoa. Also, probably not a good idea to have all those candles with Pete walking around. One more beer, and that place is burning to the ground. Why would I give her the six pack? We'll know when the time comes to make that decision when you meet the locksmith. The locksmith carries $10,000. So yeah, there's this guy called the locksmith. He just randomly appears throughout the show. And I gotta say, no exaggeration here, he is my favorite character in any TV show of all time. And you will agree with me by the end of the video, I promise. The next time you meet the locksmith, it will be time for Stephanie to say goodbye to the first man. <laughs> dude, that, that line is so ominous, dude. It sounds like a fucking line from Game of Thrones. When the locksmith arrives, one man must go. So let it be written, so let it be done. All right, so they get all chained up, they leave the ritual room and go to the kitchen to eat breakfast. And this scene is pretty uncomfortable to watch, so apologies in advance. But apparently before the boys showed up to the house, they were shown videos of five women and they were asked to rate them from one to 10. But one of the women they rated was Steph. One of those women was me. So she's gonna read her own ratings in front of everybody. Let's see how that goes. Jason's ratings, you gave me a four for looks. That's out of 10. And you also said that you usually date more attractive. <laughs> Who, me? Your tape was, didn't look like you. And for having sex with me, you had very little interest. Oh my God, like what a nightmare for everybody involved. Like why, why? <laughs> Why would the producers do that? Why put that in the show? That is so mean. Okay, you said here I was, uh, I'm the ugliest person you've ever seen and you'd rather lick a dog's poopy stinky ass than ever be in the same room as me. I'm disgusting and should be thrown in a river. No, your tape didn't look like you. I'd say all that stuff about someone else, but not you. I'm a good guy. Pete, you gave me an eight for looks, even with my disgustingly horrifying tape. A nine for intelligence. Oh my God, oh, man. Guys, <laughs> Pete gave her a good rating She's reading off the, the rating and everyone's like, oh God, come on. Oh my God. Like scoffing, that is so mean. Pete's, Pete's just fucking drunk, dude, don't listen to him. You're a two. They're all a bunch of children. So all in all, I think they're off to a good start. That's the end of this book, thank you. So now they all pile into a car and go to a grocery store to get food for dinner. Are you guys ready? Smoke <laughs> okay, come on guys. I wonder which grocery store chain they went to. I'm innocent! Let me out, I'm innocent! Like, is this supposed to be like symbolic of something? Like, is this supposed to represent like, oh, the old ball and chain, you know? You like, you know that thing that middle-aged men say when they hate their wives? Yeah, sorry fellas, I can't go golfing today. Oh, Gotta spend time with the old ball and chain. Yeah, yeah, okay. next time. See ya. Okay, I love you so much. Oh. All right, oftentimes throughout the show, it cuts to these like talking head segments where they can get like one-on-one -on -one time with a camera. But the way they do it in this show, 
Like all the other people, since they're chained together, they just have big headphones on, so they just can't listen to what the person is saying, but like, come on, you know? Come on. You're telling me they obeyed that rule? Fuck that. Fuck that, man. If I was on that show, I'm, I'm putting one up. I'm listening, I'm listening. I'm listening. And don't act like you wouldn't do the same. We all looked at people's shoes when we were playing Heads Up 7 Up. You would do the exact same. And action. Yeah, Stephanie's great. I think she's a great girl. Um, but that Jason guy, wow, he's a piece of work. I fucking hate that guy. He's a quivering pussy and a fraud, okay? Mark my words, I'm going to kill Jason tonight. When everyone's sleeping, I'm gonna put a pillow over his head, shoot him in the heart. All right, perfect. All good? Okay, great. Thanks. Hi, hi, yeah, sorry. I I heard all of that. You guys, you guys gotta call the cops or something. I, he's gonna kill me tonight, you heard that, right? I'm sorry, man, my hands are tied. What do you mean your hands are tied? We're filming a spinoff called Ropes of Love, Cameraman Edition. My hands are literally tied. Well, what do I do? I don't wanna get shot. Hey, it's me, Pete. Did somebody say shots? So later that night, they're all hanging out, they're in the hot tub, having a good time. But then, the guys make a joke that kinda, kinda kills the whole vibe. What's bubbling there? <laughs> it's not a joke, there's bubbles coming out of your crotch. This is like so, like, bathroom humor. Why is that so funny to guys? Flatulence? But it's not, not about humor. humor. It's about you guys you making you feeling good about, about yourself no. by putting people down. Holy moly. Well, what did, what did you expect, Steph? You put four guys in a room, they're gonna be laughing about farts most of the time, if not all the time. Toilet humor is not funny. All right, you saying you don't fart, Steph? Is that what you're saying, Steph? Fuck off, you fart. All Steph's fart. This shit pisses me off, man. Farting is music to my ears. It's poetry in motion. Watch. You're telling me you didn't laugh at that? Okay, sure. Your butt makes a noise that stinks. That is so funny, and whoever doesn't think so, you're a Steph, that's the new term. Someone who doesn't laugh at farts, you're a Steph. But anyways, the first day is over, so they all go to bed. I thought about this the first time I watched this, like, what if they like play the time lapse of like overnight of them sleeping and like really quick it cuts to like two dudes who are just fucking <laughs> making out with each other, <laughs> like super quick and they just didn't mention it after it. <laughs> Holy fuck, that'd be so good. If all the guys just fell in love with each other and left Steph all alone, the guys are making out with each other and just farting and making out and she's in the middle, just all bummed. But anyways, the next day they're brought to this big field to do like a, an obstacle course for some reason. But when they get to the end of it, it is, this is probably my favorite shot <laughs> in any show ever. Okay, dude. Oh snap! Oh, oh snap! It's the locksmith. This man is everywhere, dude. Holy shit! How long was he behind that tarp? Poor guy was behind that tarp just all night long, in the rain, freezing cold, just waiting. <laughs> but, like the old scripture says, when the locksmith arrives, one man must go. This person's um, rating changed um, when we um, started drinking, and that person is you, Pete. No! All right, pour one out. Pour one out for Pete. And he'll catch it in his mouth, I'm sure, because he loves booze. Gone too soon. Rest in Pete. All right, so they're down to three guys now, and later that night, they take a super awkward car ride. I hate this scene so much, but we're gonna watch it. Ah, uh, that was in my ear! Well, I didn't get you. But see, this one's better. <laughs> I could do that. Yeah, man, I'm sure you can. It's a, it's a kiss. I could do that. Uh, this is why I hate shows like this, man. It is so uncomfortable to watch dudes like fight for attention. Cause when it works for one guy and he gets like kiss, like I feel weird watching that. And when it doesn't work for the other guy and he has to watch the other guy get a kiss, I feel even worse watching that. Look at him, he's got him in a headlock. <laughs> Alternative title for this show, the Mighty Cucks. You're like a big sweaty horny dude. <laughs> I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Ah! Okay, so now they're all at a skating rink, because why not? The ice rink instructions say, welcome to the world's first game of strip hockey. Let's get it on! Nah, <laughs> not really good instructions. The instructions say, welcome to strip hockey. Let's oh. get it on! I'm sure this clip was just edited down for time, but those weren't, those weren't instructions at all. Imagine if you bought Monopoly and you brought it home, and you're super excited to play it, you never played it before, you open the box, you take out the instructions, and it says, Welcome to Monopoly. That's bullshit, man. I would burn all those little greenhouses to the ground. Why would I give her the six pack? But anyways, they play a game of strip hockey. I'll blur it, because it gets pretty raunchy. But, <laughs> but I will play this one part, because it is, it's another amazing scene with the locksmith. So let's watch. <laughs> no. 
Hey man, <laughs> just so creepy. Oh, no. Nice car. Creepiness aside, the locksmith is here, so we know what that means. Say it with me. One man must go. This person had come between me and somebody else, so I've decided the person I'm going to release is Jack. Uh. uh. Wow. Ah, it's like a way too personal. Oh no. I'm going to give you money and I'm going to count out $1,500. I'll take it. I, I could do, do that. that. The ice skating, I think, revealed a little bit more about him and his lack of athleticism that I kind of require. Hold on, let's not, okay. Whoa, 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 backtrack. Let's, hold on. Okay, whoa, 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 let's bring that back. Steph already doesn't like farts. So she's on, she's on my shit list. But what she just said, that, she, that that puts her on my diarrhea list. Even worse than a shit list. Lack of athleticism. Uh? <laughs> you mean he was the only guy there who didn't have a fucking rockin' bod? That's what you mean, right? Say it with your chest, Steph. Don't look at Jack and be like, yeah, you came between me and someone else and I didn't like that. And then when he leaves, you talk shit to the camera and you're like, yeah, he was fucking fucking bad as shit. He's a, he's a weirdo, he's out of shape. Straight up sent Jack home because he wasn't jacked. That's whack. Gone too soon. Rest in Jack. But we're down to the final two. And holy smokes, just not looking good for Jason at all. He's given his fucking interview thing to the, the camera and <laughs> fucking, she's holding hands with Alan while he's doing it. I feel like she already made her decision, right? Yeah, I really like Steph. I think she likes me too. We have a lot in common. We have this really strong connection. Uh, and I think she's gonna pick me. You know, I no, no offense to the other guy, but I just don't, I don't really see them having a future together. <laughs> Turn, you should turn around. Huh? Turn around, I said. Look behind you. Dang it. I'm sorry, man. That's brutal. What the heck? I really didn't think he had a shot. Hey, it's me, Pete. Did somebody say shot? All right, folks. This is the final day. Each guy gets a one-on-one -on -one date with Steph, chain-free, so they can finally have some alone time. Just kidding. They just replaced the chain with a longer chain. The odd man out will trail behind on a longer chain. <laughs> By myself, then be with somebody that doesn't oh. fulfill all of my desires needs. and needs. Being on this date, chained with them, <laughs> no. was not my idea of a good time. They couldn't give him like a Game Boy, like a book, anything. He just has to like stand and watch them go on a date. That reminds me of like when, you know when you're a kid, like at the mall with your mom and she like runs into a, like an old friend and they talk for just so fucking long. And you're like, I, all right, mom, can we go? Gotta go watch Boy Meets World, come on. It's like that, but so much worse. Cause instead of your mom, it's the girl you wanna date, and instead of your mom's old friend, it's the guy that she wants to date. But anyways, now it's time for Jason's date. Uh, and you know what? I'm rooting for him. His hair is sick. Uh, he's. I feel like he's the least obnoxious out of all of them. And I just fucking feel bad for the guy after Alan's date. And this part really bugs me because the date's going pretty well, but they're like walking on the beach one part and Alan is like behind them so close, like chirping them, drinking a bottle of wine right behind them, just being a Fucking jerk, man. Alan has a problem with not getting enough attention. But I digress. Uh, we're getting close to the end. Let's see what happens. I think I've done a good job by, you know, bringing it to you, to you two guys. I'm glad we were the last three. Somebody say something. Why was that so fucking awkward? <laughs> all right, it's the locksmith. So we all know what that means. Say it with me. One man must go. This person who I've decided to let go um, was unable to really understand me. And this person is you, Jason. Ooh. I have to release you. Oh, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, what? You're gonna pick Alan? Okay. Let's, Alan's the one who started the fart joke that you got so fucking pissed about. It's not a joke, there's bubbles coming out of your crotch. <laughs> he was drinking obnoxiously right behind your date with Jason, which is precisely the reason you sent Pete home. It's completely the biggest turn off. And Alan gave you a five for looks and three for class and elegance. Alan, you gave me a five. Yes. For looks. And a three <laughs> for class and elegance. It was the dress. And you pick that spiky haired fuck over Jason? <laughs> okay, Steph, for someone who hates farts so much, you sure are one. <laughs> Damn, gone too soon. Rest in Jason. Okay, well, fuck me. I wish this was the ending, but there's a bit more. Now they share one night together, and the next morning, Steph needs to decide if she wants to keep all the money and just say fuck off to Alan, or split the money with Alan and proceed to have a relationship with him. So let's see what this fart does. Yes, I'd like to pursue 
relationship with you. Wow, cool. Must split the remaining money. $6,433. Okay. So now we see if Alan wants to do the same. <laughs> oh, thank God. I'm scared. <laughs> wow, yay. That should be Jason, dude. Actually, no, fuck, no, Jason deserves way better. But well, regardless of my feelings towards the outcome, I'm happy for him, okay? I'm sure they went on to have a long, you know, fruitful relationship with each other. Next. Oh, fuck. Well, I mean, I could have told you that because the thing about dating shows, uh, it's a silly way to meet someone and most of the time, they're not even real. <coughs> so that's Chains of Love. I feel like I've already said what I wanted to say about this TV show. Dating shows are weird. I don't like them and I especially don't like this one. I'm just glad TV moved away from one, like being really big in the back. And two, I'm glad TV moved away from these like dating game shows because now we just have singing game shows and those are, so much better. All right, well, I think it's time to hear a word from today's sponsor, Audible. Hey, it's me, the locksmith. When I'm standing behind a tarp or standing in a tunnel above a skating rink, it gets pretty boring. And for me, the best way to pass the time is with Audible. As I'm kidding, it's, it's me, it's Curtis. <laughs> but I agree, Audible is great. Audible is a leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks. Ranging from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, languages, and now podcasts. And if you've never given Audible a shot, now is the perfect time. They just launched Audible Plus, which allows full access to their Plus catalog, which is filled with thousands and thousands of select originals, audiobooks, and podcasts, including ad-free versions of popular shows, as well as exclusive series. So on top of your regular Audible subscription, you have literally thousands of other titles available to you to stream, download, and listen to wherever you want, as much as you want. The, the limit, limit does not, not exist. exist. I've personally decided that over the winter, I wanna like work out more. <laughs> and I've never really been a fan of going to the gym anyways. And since they're closed now, I need to work out from home. So I've downloaded this audiobook called Quick Home Workouts that I'm really looking forward to trying out. That's just one example of what Audible has to offer. If you like true crime, Audible's got it. Fantasy or sci-fi, Audible's got it. Literally any other genre, Audible's got it. And folks, I know I said now was the best time to try it out, and I really mean that. Because with Audible's holiday offer, you are getting the best offer of the year. If you give them a try right now, Audible is only $4.95 a month for your first six months. And that price includes the full immediate access to Audible Plus. After your first six months, it's still only $7.95 a month to download and stream all you can listen audiobooks, originals and podcasts included in the audible plus plan and getting started is so easy just go to audible.com slash curtis town or just text curtis town to 500 500 all right thank you to audible for sponsoring this video i hope you guys check them out you're getting the best deal of the year and it also helps me out when you guys check out my sponsors so everybody wins so yeah again that's audible.com slash curtis town or text curtis town to 500 500 that easy. All right, thanks Audible, back to me. All right, thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please press that like button because believe it or not, one like actually equals one beer that I will ship to Pete. I will give him a, one, one like equals one beer for Pete and he's thirsty. Let me know if you've seen the show before and I always love reading your guys' comments. You guys are way funnier than I am. And I'm excited to see what you guys think about this one. If you guys want me to do another video about this, all the episodes are on YouTube, so maybe I'll do another one or maybe I'll do a, a video about a different dating show. I don't know. Let me Just let me know. You can press the subscribe button if you want because as soon as you press the subscribe button, you become a valued citizen of Curtis Town. Uh, if you didn't know, Curtis Town is the best place to live in the world and I'm the mayor, so you have to be nice to me. It's the law. If you want to see the other things I do, you can check the description, my podcast, my Instagram, Twitter, all that bull crap is down there. Merch, my new merch, holiday merch. All right, that's it. I gotta go. I would stick around, but I have to fart in a hot tub. See ya. Why would I give her the six pack?